Good day, Minecraftians. Purple Mentat here in an old version of my regrowth world to show off a new version of regrowth. I am on the 0.71 version, and we're going to do a rundown of all of the changes that are important to you as a player. First and foremost among those is a whole mess of new quests found in the life of the world detailing all of the various seeds and multiple new spawn eggs, and the way the world feels, perhaps you can use them in the art of thaumaturgy, as well as how the world changes. Witchcraft is now one of the most covered mechanics in the entire pack. Witchery has had an extensive list of quests added that covers most of what the mod can do. The starter quests in What the World Came to Be have been adjusted slightly to show the new requirement for tilled soil from the Garden Core mod. You will need to create garden soil, which needs to be made with compost, which can be created by putting compostable material into your compost bin. And then the compost plus dirt gets you your garden soil. And that is what you're going to need to grow all of your magical crops on. There are... A number of new mods. Let's go through all of the mod changes now. Most of them are bug updates and such, but we're going to start with the new stuff, which is really cool. We have witching gadgets, which adds a number of extra cool things for Thaumcraft. The primary bonus of witching gadgets is to allow the obelisks from Thaumcraft you know, those things that the cult spawn around, those should retrogen in your world if you enable it to do so. If you are creating a brand new world for 0.7, this is nothing that you need to worry about. It's all taken care of and the obelisks will generate normally. However, if you are continuing a world from 0.6.5, you will need to retrogen the obelisks. It also adds gear for all of the various slots in the Traveler's Gear mod, including the cloak. So go ahead and make use of that. Totally worth it. There are some cool things. You're going to need to do a lot of research, though. But that's why you have the way the world feels. It'll be a good primer introduction to Thaumcraft. It's not going to take you through everything just yet. But remember, this is only 0.71. There's a long way to go before this pack is considered quest complete. But it's enough to get you started. Another cool mod that was added, the mods Creeper Collateral and Impure Core, which is a required mod for Creeper Collateral. Basically, the point of Creeper Collateral is both to protect your blocks in the overworld. For example, if I grab myself a Creeper here and give myself some armor to make sure it doesn't kill me we should see that the creeper is not able to actually blow up the surrounding terrain. For the overworld, it's set this way. I don't believe it's set so in the nether. The other great change is nether ores, when exposed to an explosion, will always be broken. Any explosions you attempt to use in the nether will flat out destroy and delete any nether ores that are exposed to them. No more using TNT to shortcut your way to nether osbium. Another cool mod that's been added is Enchiridion 2. Not much in the mod itself. You still got the bookbinder from the original Enchiridion, and you've got the introductory book from Enchiridion 2, which is basically just a template. The cool part about Enchiridion 2 is the library. If you press H, it will open a Civilpedia style thing that you can look through. And while there isn't a lot of info in it just yet, it does have the full details on how you can create such said info. And you can bet that the Phoenix Lodge is going to be making use of this library to add an entire reference for this mod pack. This is a really amazing mod, and Josh did a wonderful job putting it together. It's, I mean, it's responsive, it's cool, I'm impressed. Next on the list, we have Enhanced Inventories. This mod appears massive, but the basic of it is that you can combine any metal that you can think of with any plank, and then upgrade all the way up, until you get to Manulin chests, which are just crazy. One of these manulin chests, well, that's a lot of storage. I believe it was something like 9 by 18 
storage slots, which comes out to 162 potential stacks. And if you have two of the same wood, you can make them double chests. Yeah. Also, these are fully eyesighted. They will work with buildcraft pipes, hoppers, you name it. So now you have your early game expandable into late game large chests. No need to build crazy amounts of storage drawers. Another neat thing that we have is the super crafting frame mod. The super void frame made with an ender pearl, the super cr item frame made with a dropper, and the super crafting frame made with a crafting table. The crafting frame will allow you to automate creation of, of certain repetitive recipes. For example, say you want to farm a whole bunch of coal essence the way I currently am, and you're sick of needing to input the recipe manually. Well, you can stick this super crafting frame on here, and you can fill it with coal essence. And then once you fill the chest with coal essence, when you right click the rafting, crafting frame, it will use the materials out of the chest. As you can see, we're burning through our coal essence. If you have no coal essence in the chest, by the way, these inventories are fully inventory tweaks enabled, which is amazing. If you have no coal essence in the chest, it'll go ahead and use it out of your inventory instead. Really cool item that is going to be very helpful for the early game before you have any means of proper automation. And in this pack, that'll last you right through the mid game. Pretty happy about that. And then we have the addition of bees. Specifically, we have extra bees, which I have horribly misspelled. Yes, um, extra bees, adding all of the cool machines and extra alveary stuff. Magic bees adding, well, you know, all of those magic bee items, all of those cool combs, the extra hives and such. And there have been recipes added for transmuting all of these various hives in your alchemy mana pool. So you will have access to everything. You can even create yourself an oblivion frame if you can get yourself this essence of scornful oblivion. It's going to take some doing, as you can see. Dragon eggs even. We have a re reproducible dragon egg now outside of the crazy dragon fish from Mariculture because to heck with that, right? So yeah. Extra bees, magic bees, if you like bees, we've got your bees, and then some. And more importantly, we do have the li likes of genetics as well for you to do your genetic work. The isolator, the sequencer, the polymerizer, yeah. You'll be able to get all of your various bee genetics done this way instead of needing to worry about doing the standard forestry breeding for the hundreds of species that are now in the pack. That covers most of the new mods. Let's start talking about some of the updated mods. Now, most mods have only had bug fixes and that sort of thing added as updates, and I'm going to be kind of glossing over those. We're going to talk mostly about mods that have new content available to them. In AgriCraft, there have been a couple of key changes that you need to know about beyond just bug fixes. You will no longer be able to get away with harvesting forever with the same scythe. You're going to need to repair it before this broken scythe, so we're happy to right-click your plants and harvest them all. The big important difference is the change in magical crops. You will notice that I do have some magical crops planted on soil here. However, if I harvest this crop, it cannot grow, and even if I get some magical fertilizer and make sure that it is well lit by having a torch right next to it. No matter how much I right click this, this will not grow. As I said before, and I'm stressing it again, just so that you guys don't know why your materials have completely stopped growing, you are going to need tilled garden soil, which you get by putting down any garden soil you want and attacking it with your favorite mattock. Well, I say attacking. I mean right-clicking. Like so. Put down some crops. Replace your nature seeds. And now you will be able to grow this plant. Even though its neighbor will not grow. Because its neighbor is on dirt. Farmland. Instead of the tilled garden soil. 
So yeah, if you find that your crops have completely stopped growing, make sure you have them planted on the proper dirt. Speaking of the proper dirt, if I take a look at, say, carrot seeds, I can see that they will mutate with belladonna seeds and regular seeds on farmland, you know, hummus, tilled garden soil, humus, I'm sorry, not hummus. Hummus is delicious tasty chick bean dip that is made by grinding that and a bunch of spices together. Humus is a terrible, loamy, kind of uh, fungus, uh, fungusy soil that you definitely do not want to eat. Important note on that, as long as we're talking about what sort of soil you're looking for, the mystical flowers will only grow on garden soil, the untilled kind. This is both the cr soil that you can mutate this on, and the only kind of soil it will grow on. One other really cool thing about Agricraft, nether wart. There is now a purpose to actually growing it. For one, you can now plant it on soul sand, and if you get it higher level and actually have a higher gain stat than one, it will now respect the gain stat. So your nether wart will happily grow in your soul sand on your crops. This is particularly important because you can no longer craft nether wart with the nether essence, as you can see with me cycling through. You can make it with the Witch's Cauldron, but that's a huge amount of resources to spend on it, especially a Tear of the Goddess and some Diamond Paper. You can make it with a Nether Fish if you want to breed your fish together to make that. Uh, actually, do you even breed Nether Fish? No, you have to go to the Nether and fish them up. One other big important change, Cactuses! No longer give metadata too. They give proper item 81 no metadata cactus. So, that should no longer be a problem for you. Moving down the list of updated mods, we have Applied Energistics, which has some UI improvements and a fun change. The formation plane is now able to drop things as items. This should be particularly useful for those of you who use the inscribers or the, I think the crystal growth accelerators. I'm not 100% up to date on AE2 but I know that this is a useful thing to do with a full AE system to make some very important component or another. After Applied Energistics, we have Auto Magi. The big changes for Auto Magi that seemed important when I was looking into it, there are some new items and some minorly altered mechanics. You can get full details by checking your local Thaumanomanomicon. The coolest item out of Auto Magi that I saw in the update was the Red Crystal had some improvements so that it should work just a little bit better. Cool next thing, we have Blood Magic. There are a couple of additions. Specifically, there has been a couple of changes to the Ritual Divinder. Ritual Tune to Face North. Hmm, that's interesting, huh? Yeah, there's ways to change that that I'm not 100% certain of. Also, you may notice that you can hold shift and left click to cycle in the opposite direction. I don't know if that's new behavior or not, but it's certainly new to me. And it was the major patch note was the changes to the Ritual Diviner. Also, there's been a rare condition added called Pax Pox. Something tells me that Wei had a nasty time in the week back from Boston. Next on the list, some pretty cool additions coming to Bibliocraft. If I find myself a clipboard, clipboards could always be used in hand, but now, they have the ability for you to place them on the wall by shift right clicking and you can interact with the clipboard right here by right clicking on the check mark or change the page. Really cool stuff. I'm happy about that. There are now attach attachable desks. If you put a couple of types of desk together, you're going to need the new ones. The new framed desk is created using framing boards and framing sheets in place of the usual planks and wood slabs. Framing boards being made out of sheets with the saw and the framing sheets being made out of any plank with the saw. Uh, I'm actually going to need a couple of those, but the easy way to do that is actually going to be to set that down and just add another. Now to make use of said desk, you'd come over here and use maybe some dark oak wood planks. And like so, you get a dark oak wood framed desk. Now there are framed versions of all of the different blocks, so they're not displaying in any eye. I'm using the desks specifically to show you one cool new mechanic that they have available. 
if you were to shift right click this desk and this desk next to it, they become connected. And you can do this with as many desks as you want. Let's see how it handles corners, huh? Not very well, apparently. Okay, so it can't handle corners all that well, but that looks pretty handsome to me. As far as I'm concerned, that's, uh, that's just grand. I'm happy with this. So yeah, you can do this with your bookcases, with your book, your shelves, your potion shelves, your tool rack, uh, the cases, the labels, the clocks, painting frames, map frames, tables, seats, all five seat backs, everything can be framed. Also, of interest and note, there's a new item called the Plumb Line. And what the Plumb Line does is, if you're in the world and you right click, it measures the depth one block in front of you. So if I'm standing here and I measure down, well, it's three meters. Excellent. If I'm standing on top of this and I measure down, that's 15 meters. This is really great if you're looking to find an exact Y level above where you're at. Pretty useful. Perfect for building monster spawners. Moving on, we have build craft. There have been some significant uh, changes to robots and their energy usage. It has been lowered by between four and 10 times, meaning they will use between 25% and 10% of the mana that of the uh, energy that they used to use, making them a lot more efficient and a lot better at doing their job. Also, there is a new item, a new block called the programming table, which is going to be used to program redstone boards. They have completely replaced the old random way of of getting your redstone boards. You can now set them up in any way that you want. So if we take a look at our redstone boards, for example, if we want a Shuffleman board, well, we can get the board and then we use it. Oh, we don't have any eye integration for that just yet. You will have to check the Buildcraft wiki to get the exact recipes on all of these. In Railcraft, there's a couple of cool new things that they can do. One, there is a void metal crowbar because we totally needed a six attack damage warping one crowbar, didn't we? That auto repairs itself. Two, it has changed around the way the fluid transfer rate works for boilers and tanks. So more than just build craft pipes will be compatible. This should allow them to support mechanism pipes a little bit better. And three, the other big thing that seemed important for the player, comparator support has been added to iron and steel tanks. You will now be able to gauge how full your railcraft multi-block tank is by making use of a comparator. That's going to be pretty cool, and I'm sure that there's a lot of applications for that, if you think about it. If you really want to, say, have something shut off once your tank is full, or start, say, diverting the flow of creosote oil out the void pipe as soon as your tank is full. There's some options. All right, let's talk about the cool additions to storage drawers that come in this pack. For one, the base size of the drawers has been doubled. Your two oak drawers can hold 16 stacks per drawer, meaning if you fully upgrade something to 13 times its base value, you will now be able to hold 208 stacks per drawer in your standard two drawer block. The other cool thing that's been added is the single block drawer. Basically, if you want to get a drawer that fits with the rest of your decor, but functions a little bit more like a barrel, uh, there's only one type of item that can go in there. Also of note, which is a very minor thing, but kind of fun, before, if you had a bunch of items in your drawer and you were to left click, you would get a single item. Now, it follows Java functionality. Left click gets you a stack. Shift le left click gets you a single item. That's just nice for consistency. Now, the really cool thing that was added in storage drawers is the, not the drawer controller, the compacting drawer. 
It says it holds 16 stacks per drawer. It'll only hold one type of material. That type of material is going to be a metal. If I put in a bunch of blocks of iron, well, I can either pull out blocks of iron or I can pull out iron ingots or iron nuggets. And if I were to grab, say, a couple stacks of iron nuggets and then put them back in, it automatically compacts them as much as it can into the blocks of iron. If I were to take out just three or four iron ingots, it only uncompacts one block of iron. And then if I were to then take out, say, six iron nuggets, it's still only uncompacted one iron nugget. And then I can put these back in and these back in. Also, like all of the drawers, it is hopper compatible. So if I were to grab a stack of iron and a stack of nuggets, actually that was one of each because I'm still used to the old functionality. And then I were to reinsert those by hopper, well, you can watch them slowly increase and slowly compact as they go. Compacting drawers are awesome. I am really happy about these, especially since they still work with your upgrades. You can give them the storage upgrade six and the display of uh, the status upgrade two. Can't you? Yes, you can. Anyway, I believe the status upgrade just uh, makes them show fill level based on a redstone signal. I haven't messed around with it enough to know. I've just know that now this thing can hold 208 stacks of blocks of iron. Yeah, that should keep you good as far as that's concerned. This uh, now, if I'm right, this should also work with diamond. Diamond doesn't have a shard, but if I put the blocks of diamond into the compacting drawer, it will allow me to pull out the diamonds. No problem. So yeah, that's the cool thing added for storage drawers. I'm definitely going to be retrofitting my storage area to make use of them because that's just awesome. Now, the really fun part is I think that they will work just fine with applied energistics storage panes, which means if you know how to build the expandable storage space that usually uses barrels, you can do it with these drawers and get a lot more bang for your buck out of them because they will supply any one of these items to the storage pane. I'm not 100% certain that that's going to work, but it seems like it should. Or the storage interface. Can't remember what it's called. I think it's a storage. Yeah, we go. Storage bus. That's what it is. Man, been a long time since I messed with Applied Energistics. Looking forward to getting into it sometime soon in the Let's Play series. Okay, so you may have noticed that I've skipped a couple of very important mods, specifically Witchery and Batania. These are the big magic mods. They form uh, part of the backbone of the pack, and I want to leave them to last, especially because the Batania changes are so extensive. In Batania, all of the mana producing flowers have been altered. Generating flora, here we go. Your day blooms are about 20% faster overall because they've had their delay reduced. Nightshades, on the other hand, will now function exactly as fast as day blooms. As long as it's nighttime. They do not generate any slower anymore, meaning that night bloom, nightshades are about 140% faster than they used to be. Hydroangias have had their delay decrease so that they will instantly grab water after done with the last drink. In fact... You can see them working a little bit better right now. They're not taking nearly nearly as long to grab water. The single block of water lasts four times as long to stop the sound update spam, giving these a total 127% faster overall. That's right, one Hydrangea is now worth what two and a quarter used to be. That's pretty cool. It makes these a lot more competitive with the other options and significantly better still than day bloom or nightshade options one cool thing to go along with this since your mana spreader is going to be working double time if you grab some purple wool or any other color you could apply that to your mana spreader to muffle it barely any noise came out that time it also looks fancy because it just gets encased in wool and you can remove it with a shift right click I think that that's really cool. Uh, Endo flames are unchanged. They have not been changed at all. 
they are still functioning exactly the same as they used to. Uh, and tropiniums are in the same place. They have had no changes. Well, they've had some change, actually. If I grab an entropinium and some TNT, you will see what I mean. Used to be, your entropinium did the best job it could with the TNT, but there were still some negative side effects. Now, though, it heavily muffles the sound effect of the TNT, which I can demonstrate better if I take some TNT way over here and show you what the sound effect is like without the entropinium. Quite a bit louder. Also, be careful, TNT still damages things, and it looked like it 100% destroyed everything in the overworld as well. So, use caution, friends. All right, the Munchdew. Cool flower, never that great on mana generation because it was so finicky, it made things a little bit hard to work with. Now, the leaf produces tenfold mana and the internal buffer has been increased by 50 fold. They'll also go into a long cooldown period if they spend basically more than a quarter second not eating any leaves, so you really want to feed them as fast as you possibly can. The Munch 2 mana generation has been increased to 900% faster than it used to be. As it says, if it finishes eating all the available leaves and the one left without any, it'll take a break from doing so and only be able to eat again after a bit over a minute. So yeah, Munch Dew's much more possible to use these days, which is great. Same holds true for the Gormorillus. This is an item that used to eat food. The amount that a piece of food produces has been given a higher multiplier and a, the flower itself has a higher internal buffer, making it something like 255% faster overall. That's great. The Narslimus has a similar boost has a higher multiplier for the amount of that a slime produces, what it does is it will um, basically eat any nearby slime creatures, destroying them and collecting all of the mana created by that entropy. These should now be something like 400% faster, giving you four times as much mana as you used to be able to get. Thermal lilies have also been changed. Their cooldown has been lowered from 8 minutes to 6 minutes, giving a about 30% increase to their potential mana generation when left near a passive supply of lava. That's great. If you like your thermal lily farms, you have the option to use them. They've been made a little bit better, but they're still not good enough to take over the world, which is good. Kekimaru, which is the cake-eating one, which... I think I need the Elven Book. You can't actually spawn in the Elven Book, by the way. If you attempt to do so, you will crash your client, so don't do it. Even if you spawn in the base book and then hurl the Batania Alexica through the portal, you're going to end up causing a crash. Just go ahead and craft it. It's super cheap. Okay, so we were looking at the generating flora. The Kekimuru was the one that I wanted to show you real quick. This is a cake-eating flower. And the upgrade to this is getting it running at about 75% faster and 181% more resource efficient, according to Vasky's chain log. Their cooldown has been increasing the amount of mana per slice drastically increased, which is fantastic. And the Spectrolus, the flower that's particularly fond of the various tones of wool, has had no changes. So, every option that is not the Spectrolus, the... Entropinium or the Andrew Flame has had some level of upgrade, some of them minor, like uh, such as to the Daybloom, some of them very significant, such as the Munchdew, and some of them have had a flat out change to the way they all work. Now, the change log mentions a change to the Terror Shatterer. Normally, this would be able to mine Ardite and Cobalt, however, this pack enforces it to be stuck to steel at maximum. Really cool thing is that there has been a change to the NEI handling of floating flowers. You can now easily see that you make floating flowers with a mystic flower, a pasture seed, and dirt. And then if you want to make something like the floating hopperhawk, 
you'll combine any color of floating flower with the hopper hawk. So that's a cool addition to things. There's been a number of bug fixes. Most notably among them is one that was very important to me. It used to be if you attempted to use a wand of the forest on the elven gateway core from a button, things would crash. Now, if you put your wand of the forest in there and put the button on, works just fine. No client crash, no server crash. Much, much better. I already showed you the Mana Spreader sleeve, which was really cool. There are a couple of new bows that have been added. Specifically, the Crystal Bow from Batania, made with Dragonstone and the new Mana Infused String. The Crystal Bow creates arrows with mana and fires faster than normal. The Livingwood Bow acts as a normal bow, but, but repairs with mana. So you've got a cool new potential ranged weapon in the Crystal Bow. There has been... A new ring added, the Ring of Correction, which, when equipped in a rank slot, will cause you to swap to the proper active tool when you are attempting to mine a block. So, if I were to grab the Ring of Correction and some Mana Steel tools, and if I were to run over here and start trying to use my pick on the tree here, it automatically switches to the shuffle. And then if I try to dig the dirt, it changes to that. Yeah. Pretty cool in my opinion. I think that that's a neat, neat mechanic. And it will swap between any of the mana enabled tools, so it'll work for your Elementium or Terra Steel versions as well. Uh, there have been some fancy enhancements to the lexicon. You may notice that you've got icons next to everything. And the search bar that was already a part of the lexicon was made more obvious. In any of the categories, you can easily just type to search. And this is now shown on the bottom, even when you're in the lexicon index. There is a new section in the lexicon known as Ender Artifacts, with a whole bunch of cool new things and some known Ender abilities from earlier on in the mod's lifespan. There's been a tutorial mode added, which I do not remember how you activate it. Hang on. Can I look up tutorial? Ah, tutorial of the basics. Start tutorial. You have started your tutorial. Follow the red arrows and read the contents to be guided through the basics of Batania. So, yeah. It's pretty nice. Um, apparently it doesn't want to work with this version of the book. Probably because I'm as far along as I am. But... Anyway, the tutorial, I've seen it in action. It's really nice. It does a good job of getting you into the basics. There's a new mechanic that's a little hard to explain. The basics of Corporea basically allows you to create a sort of magical applied energistics of a sort. You're going to have to play with this and read over it and learn a whole bunch of how it works. It's not really going to be a direct competitor or replacement for Applied Energistics, and it's really expensive to get into, but it's good for inventory sorting, at least. You can now also make Endstone Bricks from Batania and Chiseled Endstone Bricks from Batania. The Endstone can be created with the Bottle of Ender Air, turns nearby stone into Endstone. So if I had a bunch of stone, I would then be able to lay it all down toss a bottle at it, and poof, you now have renewable endstone, which is kind of nice. And yeah, you have to actually go to the end to right-click it with a glass bottle and get some ender air, which is just silly and amusing, and I like it a lot. There have been new cosmetic blocks added, the petal blocks, which actually look kind of neat. Let's get some of these into the world just to see what the texture seems like. Yeah, they, they literally look like a path of petals. That's pretty fun. And there's been a new type of mana lens added. The warp lens. The warp lens allows you to teleport bursts around. And, according to Vasky's change log, could be used to make quarries. Good luck with that. So that's the very extensive Batania changes and additions, all of which I'm super excited about and I think is going to be amazing. Some of them more so than others, but anyway, the mod is really going places. 
Um, and it's gonna be, it's an even more fantastic backbone to have this pack based on. Witchery has also had some extensive changes to the way things work. A couple of them that really come to mind, there are now winged monkeys in witchery. So that you can be a proper Wicked Witch of the West. If you create these and tame them properly, you will be able to teach them to carry you places or fetch other players or entities from other places. The trolling options with these are simply unstoppably amazing. Very excited about those. And pick up and carry players or fetch players or other mobs. To create them, you're going to need to mutate a dog and an owl together. So, the other major change... Well, let's talk about a minor change first. There has been a change to hobgoblins. You may have seen me in my uh, Let's Play give a hobgoblin a pickaxe, and then have some trouble taking it away from it. Oh, you know what? I need to put it on a lead before it will even let me give it a pickaxe. But you may have noticed that I had some trouble taking the pickaxe away from the hobgoblin. This is because they act basically like gather golems when they are not carrying anything. And if I just toss something into the world, he will go pick it up. And now that he's holding a pickaxe, he's going to go mine things. But now if I right click on him, I take the pickaxe from him directly into my inventory instead of trying to force him to drop it on the ground. That's much more convenient. So now if I have a run hobgoblin running loose, and causing chaos in my base, I can just take the pickaxe away, and he'll pick up whatever's on the ground nearby. Another neat thing for fans of witchery that has been added to the quest book, and is more than a little bit a dig at me and my recent Ranning Carpus issues with my Hobgoblin, in the Life of the World, you will notice that there is a quest, Mentat's Minions. Creates, create a spawn Hobgoblin in. Just don't suffocate this one. <sighs> so the really cool thing that Witchery adds, all mocking aside, is vampirism. You are now able to gain levels as a vampire utilizing some new mechanics that are explained in the mod. There's also a vampiric poppet, a set of vampiric dress gear, as well as... Oh. Witch Hunter Dawn gear that will give you protection from werewolves and vampires. And there's a whole new plant in the form of garlic, which is used to defend against vampires. And it claims that it'll work with snowbells and water artichokes. I seem to remember that there were some issues with garlic that were waiting on a new version of Agricraft. However, really cool things that the vampire will be able to do. They are literally... Uh, you can literally become a blood-sucking player. Extra hotbar will unlock as you go with skills like sucking blood to gain hunger and power for abilities. Transfix your victims, hypnotizing them in place. Run like the wind, become a swarm of bats. And you will have to fear the sun at first, but later on you can overcome that with the right rituals. So yeah, because... He's absolutely crazy. The mod dev for Witchery decided, you know what? Witches are in a pretty good shape. Let's add werewolves. And then once werewolves are in a pretty good shape, he started adding vampires. I can only imagine what comes next. Now, there was a bit of an issue. Witchery changed around villages so that they could spawn in a lot more places and greatly increased the options for villages. That is why we have a 0.7.1 pack, because one of the bugs was that witchery made it so that villages could spawn in wastelands. So village generation had to be turned to no, because we are not working with them in this pack. However, if you do play with them in another pack, uh, or you alter the configs yourself because you just want to see the villages, I don't recommend this because you're going to be breaking the spirit of the pack, but... The village changes are pretty darn cool. There are guards, mayors, an entire reputation system with the town that's been expanded upon from vanilla. The villages should be walled in and defended and are basically becoming a much more key portion of the witchery mod. All right, folks, that covers all of the mod 
updates and mod additions, there have been a few other important changes along the way in the config files. Specifically, what comes to mind, Enderzoo, your concussion creepers, will no longer spawn in the Outer Lands, and the Dire Wolves have been enabled. If you happen to hear a howl happening in the world from the Ender Zoo Dire Wolf, don't be surprised. It's especially eerie out here in the wastes. They are a hostile mob. They will attack. Assuming you're not in creative mode. See? Ow, they hit hard. So yeah, careful. Careful with the Dire Wolves. Forestry. Bronze, no longer craftable in the interface. If you want to get your bronze ingots from forestry, well, you're going to have to put molten bronze into the ingot caster. It is now the only way. From the gravestone mod, nightstone and thunderstone have been disabled. Also the fog. This was partially at my request because when people end up exploring one of the wither catacombs that spawn from the gravestone mod, it would basically be permanent night and tons of thunderstorm sounds all of the time. In Iguana Tweaks, there has been reportedly a massively loosened part restrictions. The only restrictions now are for stopping some materials being made into pick and hammerheads. Also, titanium is to be set, has been set to the same harvest level as steel. Their abilities have been buffed on a number of different abilities and general balance things have been tweaked so that later game stuff is better. For example, Refined Glowstone has had the base durability reduced to 300, but now gives Reinforced 5. So it's still something you really want. Speaking of Titanium Tools, Mariculture has re-enabled the, uh, the TIC integration module, so they are back. Yay! In Magical Crops, don't be surprised to find that a number of your essence recipes no longer output nearly as much as they used to. Your three essence of skeleton now only gives you two bones instead of six. So that's one example. There are others. It just would take quite a bit of time to track them all down. Yeah, Rutile's a good one. You're only getting two ore now. I thought you think you were getting four before. In any case, that covers most of the magical crops changes. Nether ores. Nether osmium is now less common. And... Nether ores will explode three times more often than they used to when mining them without silk touch. There's that howl I was talking about. That's terrifying out on the wastes. There has been a new electron tube added. The Certis Quartz Electron Tube, made from Quadrum, using pure Certis Quartz Crystals and Redstone. And it is used to create the printed calculation circuit. In Traveler's Gear, the slot assignments have been redone because we actually have things to use all of them. The max level on the anvil, the regular anvil, has been increased from 40 to 60. Hellhounds in the Nether now have a spawn weight of half what they were, so they should stop overtaking the entire place. And a ton of plants have been added to the Mutandus Extremis mutation table. So, be a little bit careful with that. Not just extremists, actually, mut mutandus in general. You're probably going to need to create a lot more mutandus to finish that first quest, so I hope you come prepared with a bunch of nature essence, floral fertilizer, and bone meal. That's not correct. That's not how you make it. You're going to need to do a lot of early game mandrake farming and creation of wood ash as well as cactus green. I believe that they have made it so you can no longer create green dye from the dye essence, you will need to either collect eelgrass under the water or farm cactus the traditional way. For witchery, also the cracked sand has been added to the right of nature's power. That is a really cool circle magic right that I believe creates a forest of your choice in the place that you put it. You can define what kind of trees grow in that forest with a sapling. So that is a really awesome way to help regreen the area. I'm going to be making extensive use of it in the future. Mind Tweaker has had a ton of changes to the scripts, adding new recipes and fixing bugs. For example, you can no longer create snowballs from elemental essences, you need to farm snowbells. 
You can no longer create glowstone in the alchemy catalyst inscriber recipes for AE2 processors. Let's take a look at those. If you want to make yourself the calculation processor, well, you need to use the printed calculation, printed silicon, and a quartz circuit. Huh, that's not what I saw before. In any case, as you can see, they are not cheap at all. Yeah, you're going to be sad with the inscriber, printed calculation circuit, printed silicon, quartz chipset to make the calculation circuit. Yeah. And then to get the logic processor, gold chipset, the engineering processor, diamond chipset. As he says in the patch notes, while well, yes, I am evil. The thermometer can no longer be made with glass. If you want to make one of these, you're going to need a mana lens. Eh, that makes sense. That's fitting. The Skystone Elven Trade episode, uh, recipe now does require both living rock. You can no longer do it with just the one. There's been additional recipes for gravel, for quarried stone, for abyssal stone, and red rock, cracked sand, cloud, heat sand, tainted soil, and packed ice. Basically a bunch of new elemental essences. Also, the various elemental essences have each had a recipe added to melt down in a smeltery or crucible furnace so that you can create various products from them. Air essence becomes steam. Earth essence becomes molten dirt. Essence of fire becomes lava. That's an interesting one, isn't it? And the essence of water becomes water when melted in a crucible furnace or smeltery. Not 100% certain on the utility of that one yet, but there might be some early game uses that I'm not thinking of. How about you let me know if you have an idea for mass producing water out of water essence instead of making a redstone pump or something similar. You can now make sheep spawn eggs. You can now make poisoned potatoes. Just a bunch of fixes, a bunch of new recipes. Make sure you check NEI for all of the extras. Nine more mobs, two passives. All the seed bags should be gone. Ooh, there's now an alternate recipe for the crafting table. This is something that's been asked for quite a few times. You can use the hatchet and the, uh, and the planks, or you can use two slabs and two planks. So once you have the first crafting table, you can make the rest more expensive, but easier than needing to trot out your hatchet every single time you want to make it. In the quest changes, one big thing that I did not mention already, there has been a large amount of reordering of the way the various quest triggers work, so that hopefully by the time you're moving down the end of the various abilities, like in the Life of the World, by the time you're getting to creating the mystical flowers, you should not be having lag issues or if you're moving down the end of the way the world works, as the extra recipes in here require some pretty extensive questing to get to. By removing some of the unlocks and making things less deeply nested, it causes the quest book to be a lot more responsive. All right. Oh, and all of the essence seed quests have been changed. For example, when you grab ender seeds, you now have to choose between some more essence and some essence of ender. You no longer just get a free extra seed with every one that you make, and you have to choose between an actual meaningful choice instead of just, do I want a third seed or do I want some more essence? That's going to be a little bit of a hardship on those who are new to the pack. You're going to have to work a little bit harder to get what you want. Okay, that does seem to cover just about everything. This is a massive update. If I did miss anything, it was likely a bug fix that I deemed unimportant for the player to be directly informed of. I think I covered most of the major bugs that at least ha have impacted me. So I hope you found this video useful to you. Please let me know below if this was a good format for this and if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future. Thank you very much for joining me, folks, and I will see you next time.